button back on. And then as soon as I know, we are recording, we are live. I am turning this over to Stephen Gordon, the chair of the board, of Jewish Federation. Welcome. Thank you. So we're ready to go, we're all here? Yes, you're here. Okay, fantastic. So thank you all for joining us today. This is, uh, this is a very unique and very special moment for us here in this community. You know, the, uh, we're all, here we are on, on Passover and we're all experiencing a range of emotions that we did not anticipate that we would be experiencing. Everywhere from a sense of loneliness to insecurity, anxiety, uncertainty, worry, a loss of control. And at this moment, we thought it was really important, critically important, to break down silos, bring together the Jewish community, and have an opportunity for a very special moment that, that everybody in this community, maybe this world needs, this Jewish world needs, that, that consists of maybe friends, family, strangers, liberals, conservative, moderate, regardless of political leading, Chabad, Orthodox, conservative, reformed, reconstructionist, male or female, this COVID virus is impacting all. It knows no boundaries. It knows none of what I just listed. It's just impacting all of us in all sorts of odd ways and, and for many very painful ways. But at this critically important moment, all of our lives today on Pesach, we as Jews, are all coming together as one. So this is a very, very special moment that we wanted to be able to share together. And, um, and now I want to turn it over to, to our agenda and, and, um, and our Jewish leaders in our community and, uh, and go from here. But welcome and thank you all for joining and have this be an incredibly fulfilling and rewarding, moving, soulful Pesach for all of us. The song I'm about to sing for you was written by Linda Hirschhorn. It's been a favorite of mine at Pesach for a long time, but the words are especially meaningful this year. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release. Circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us in prison, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children. Keep the circle whole, circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul. For the children of our children, keep the circle. Hag Sameach, everybody. Shalom, this is Rabbi David Eliezri at Chabad Beth Meir Cohen and Yor Belinda. And it's a pleasure to be with everybody here at this Arab Arab Pesach. Each one of us is gonna take a theme from the Passover plate. And I'm gonna talk about the egg, which memorializes two important things. The first is the Korban Chagiga, the, the sacrifice that was done during temple times. And the second thing that reminds us of the tragic loss of Jewish sovereignty and the temple in the year 70 and the mourning and the sense of loss we felt to them. And this tell, in this period of time where we're all sitting alone, we're not with our brothers and cousins and the aunts and the aunt that we don't want to come to the Seder, but <laughs> seriously, we're all together alone. I want to share with you two stories about Jews in Siberian prison camps that both have together a very powerful message for both of all of us today. There was a Jew called Reblazer Nanis. He was one of the leaders of the Jewish underground in Russia. 
during the dark days of communism. It wasn't an underground that blew up buildings. It was an underground that had educated children and was run by Chabad. He was arrested and sentenced to 20 years to a Siberian prison camp in the cold north. And there he took the name, but he was named by everybody Sabota, which means that one who kept Sabbath, that one who kept Shabbat. He never transgressed to the Shabbos. But his darkest days were the days of Passover, because during the year, he could eat the bread that was baked there, and there was food he could have. But on Pesach, he didn't want to eat any leaven products. So 20 years he was in Siberia. Some years he got packages from homes. Other times, some of the guards would help him out a little bit. But every year was a battle against starvation. And one could argue maybe he should have eaten. But he said, no, I am going to observe Passover to its fullest no matter where I am. And for those of us who are alone, it's a powerful story of inspiration that we have to make our Passovers meaningful. The second story is about my holy teacher, Rav Mendel Futafas, who also was sentenced to seven years in Siberia for helping Jews escape from the former Soviet Union in 1947. And he was sitting in the Siberian prison camp together with all these guys. They were talking one late night. And each one was saying what was special about the life. And one guy said, I used to be a general in Stalin's army, and now I'm a nothing. I'm a gardener, he says in Yiddish. The other one said, I was a doctor, the leader of a hospital in Leningrad, and I feel like I have nothing in my life. And the third one said, I was an attorney, and I was a professor of law at the university, uh, at the university in, in Moscow. And each one talked about their important jobs and purposes in life. And they turned to Remendel, and he was very quiet. And he said to him, what about you? You probably had no special job. He said, no, I had a very successful business. But the business was not what made me who I am. The business was a tool, it was a medium to make me money. Because my job and my mission in life was to serve God. My job was to learn Torah. My job was to do mitzvot. And it doesn't make a difference, he told them. If I'm in a Siberian prison camp, or if I'm sitting in a synagogue in Moscow or someplace else, because I'm still on that mission. I'm still fulfilling that mission. And these two stories have for us a very powerful lesson right now. We are not sitting in a prison camp. It's not cold and thank God our tables are full of all we need. We have to make meaningful. And I like to suggest that don't just sit at the Seder table, Haggadah. Go on our website, ozewish.com or others, and get some insights about the Haggadah and prepare for the Seder tonight. And tell your children and family members to prepare something to say at the Seder. And most importantly, we have to realize that we all have a mission in life. Our mission, and this is really what this disaster is causing us to think. Why am I here? And what is my purpose of being? So some of us think it's our job, it's our employment, it's this or it's that. That's not what makes us special. God created the first human being, Adam, as one person to tell us that every person can make a profound difference in the world. And Judaism came with, a letter, with, a, with, a, with an instruction book called the Torah that the Jews received after the exodus from Egypt that tells them how to live their life. So it doesn't make a difference if we're in a Siberian prison camp or we're in sunny California or the holy city of Jerusalem, wherever it may be. Let's realize that we should make the Passover meaningful and let's realize that we all have a remarkable purpose in this world. Let's think about it a little bit and let's realize that maybe the reason God orchestrated Passover this year the way it is, is God wants to have a little alone time with every one of us. Everyone should have a wonderful, meaningful Seder. Inspire your kids. Just don't go through the Haggadah and ask the four questions, when do we eat and what's for dinner? Make it a very special experience. Make it a bonding experience. And hopefully next year, we'll all celebrate together in Jerusalem with all the Jewish people on Passover. Wishing you a happy and a good Yom Tov. Hi, I'm Arnie Rockless, the rabbi of University Synagogue. I want to thank the... Jewish Federation for bringing us all together, the rabbis, the cantors, uh, and the community. In a moment, my wife, Cantor Ruthie Breyer, is going to be singing. I've been asked to talk about Maror. Every one of us knows the moment in the Seder when Maror is about to be eaten. All of us remember that moment, even from our childhoods, if we had in our childhood Sedarim because it's so visceral, it's so memorable. We are incorporating a symbol, literally incorporating, bringing into our body, eating a powerful symbol, a message from the Seder. It's the eighth step in the 14 steps of the Seder. Feel the burn. 
that's my advice for tonight. Feel the burn. You know, if you're using horseradish in a jar, the white stuff, the red stuff with the beet juice, that's not really horseradish, but it's passable for the Seder. But did you ever take a bite of a horseradish root? The real horseradish, the one that's uncomfortable, the one that stings, the one that gives mouth burn and heartburn, the one that's not a relish like charoset, but it's painful. And that's precisely the point. Maror awakens our senses. Maror is bitter so that we will remember the bitterness of life, the bitterness of Jewish history, slavery, exile, expulsions, pogroms, and the Shoah. Bitter so that we'll remember pharaohs, ancient pharaohs and modern pharaohs who treat poverty and disease and even death as the necessary collateral damage to their thirst for power. Maror reminds us to be bitter, bitter about anti-Semitism, about racism and homophobia, about xenophobia, about all the hatreds. Maror reminds us to be bitter, but not powerless. And so we can and must fight against these pervasive bigotries throughout our society. We cannot let the old normal become the new normal. This has to be the temporary abnormal. Even more than bitterness, Maror is about empathy, radical empathy. Remembering the Torah that we were slaves, we were strangers in a land not our own. We were slaves, we know the heart of the stranger, we know the heart of the slave. Our liturgy of freedom, the Haggadah, tells us to teach our children that very same radical empathy. The Seder is a drama. The Haggadah is a script. The food on the Seder plate are the props. And each of the, one of us has to be an improvisational actor around the Seder table. We have to make this paradigmatic foundational story of liberation the central theme, not only of the Seder experience, but of our lives. That's who we are. That's what Judaism has made us. People who break chains, our own. People who bring justice. People who do the work of tikkun olam. We don't look at the maror and resist it or resent it. We take it as an obligation, like the burning bush something that burns in our hearts so passionately that we know is addressed to each one of us and all of us together. And so tonight at your Seder tables, whether you are with a few people or you are Zooming with a larger group or you're going to the one of many synagogues like University Synagogue that is having a Seder online, Go to the website of your favorite synagogue, find that Seder, and take part with a much larger group, a bigger family, the family of our people, the family of people who pursue justice, the family of the people who sit at a Seder table in order not just to remember and retell, not just in order to re-experience, but to do the work of liberation in the world. Chag Sameach, everyone, is Yisin Pesach. Chag Sameach, everybody. I'm Ruti Breyer, the Kantor at University Synagogue. I'm so glad that you're all here sharing this moment with us. And please join in with me singing Let My People Go. <laughs> Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go, oppressed so hard they could not stand, let my people go, go down, Moses, way down. In Egypt, land, tell Lord Pharaoh, let my people go. 
his rest to by the water's side let my people go by God's command it is divine let my people go go down Moses way down in Egypt land tell Lord Pharaoh let my people go Hello, everybody. I am Rabbi Heidi Cohen of Temple Beth Shalom, and what an honor it is to be with all of you at this moment, this crazy moment on so many different levels where we are frantically trying to get our houses in order and clean in a way that we can to cook as we can, and I know so many are cooking much smaller quantities than we're used to. I mean, think about it. In our seders, we might have some of us 20 people at our table or more. And tonight, our tables are a little smaller. Maybe there's only one plate, maybe two, maybe four. But you know what? It doesn't matter. The most important person who is there is you, that you are present. I want to thank all of you for being present with us at this moment, or if you're watching this later on. Passover, Pesach is this time of renewal. And thinking about the karpas, I have behind me here my virtual background of being in the green. It is spring and it is beautiful. Even amidst this virus, even amidst this chaos, there is beauty all around us. I hope you are taking moments of being able to go outside and take a breath and fill your body with that nishama and that ruach and that breath that God has placed within us. Karpas, that reminder of spring, we dip it. We dip it in the salt water as a reminder of the tears, the tears that were shed in Egypt. And yes, some of the tears that we experience now, these tears of not being together in the same place, in the same presence as our family and our friends, the tears of frustration of being in, in this quarantine. But I hope, I hope that you allow the tears to flow. Don't hold them back. Sometimes we want to hold it all in and feel we need to be strong. Sometimes we really need to be able to allow them to flow freely, to be able to taste the salt water of our tears, to know that there is redemption ahead, that there is promise, that there is hope. I hope we all hold on to that hope of knowing that, yes, we will, we will come out on the other side of this into a beautiful place spring of life. Back in, uh, at the time of, um, of Tu B'Shvat, when we planted, we celebrated the trees, we plant seeds for, uh, for, for Pesach. We plant seeds of parsley in hopes that they might grow, that they might grow so that we can enjoy them during this time. Those seeds are planted at almost the dark time of our year. Yes, we start to have more time of light, but it's still dark and they are planted in darkness. But what's so beautiful is when those seeds start to sprout, they come into the light. From darkness, there is light. And together, we are going to come out from this darkness into the light. That's what Pesach is. 
this wonderful time of redemption, this wonderful time of renewal. I know it can be challenging. I know it can be hard. But you know what? We are all together, one community. How amazing is this to have this wonderful panel of all of us together? So thank you, everyone. Thank you for being a part of this with us. May you have a sweet Passover, a time of joy. And we thank you all so very, very much. Chag Sameach from my heart to yours. Thank you, everyone. Chag Sameach. Please join with me in a song that everybody knows and everybody loves. Dayena. <clears throat> Just a moment while we bring on Rabbi Siner from Temple Beth, Congregation Beth Jacob. Let's see, while we are waiting for um, Rabbi Siner, what we are going to do is I'm just going to give a moment. Um, there are um, potentially, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, let's see. We would have loved to have had Rabbi Spitz join us. We're just having some technical difficulties with him and with one of our other rabbis that was joining us today. And um, I believe that Natalie Young, uh, one of our cantors is right here. And I'm going to put um, Cantor Young on and she'll lead us in song right now. I have a beautiful piece that I'd love to share with everyone today, Vahisha Amda by Yonatan Razel. And the text says, this promise has stood for our parents and for us in good stead. For not just one enemy has stood against us to wipe us out, but in every generation, there have been those who have stood against us to wipe us out. Yet the Holy One, blessed be He, keeps on saving us from their hands. We are living in uncertain times right now, and sometimes the enemy is not so obvious and sometimes we have to look beyond those things that frighten us those things that keep us apart and realize that we are strengthened by one another and we are living in a really special time right now going through something while it's scary we are able to connect with one another. We are able to lift each other up through our screens and bring our community together closer. And it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what time zone you're in. We are able to gather from all corners of the earth together to celebrate our freedoms tonight for Passover. Ishe am the Lord. 
home to your home. And I'm Cantor Natalie Young from Temple Beth L of South Orange County. Oh. On technical difficulties, Passover this year is humbling in ways. I've been asked to talk about what is Chazeret? And frankly, I had to do a little research. I knew vaguely, but I was in good company. First, I'll tell you why. It's not clear what Chazeret is. You know that great Maxwell Haggadah many of you like me grew up with? It's not on the Seder plate. But it is on many of the new Seder plates. There it is. Chazeret. Wilted piece of Chazeret. Yes. Romaine lettuce. So why is lettuce on the Seder plate? Why do we have it at our Seder? And this is where I require a little research. First of all, we're in good company of not, for many of us, knowing much what Chazeret is. In the Talmud, there's a discussion about the different kinds of more. And one of the leading rabbis of the third century of Babylonia, he says, what's Chazeret? And he's, which is an Aramaic term. And they answer with a Hebrew term, chasa. Chasa means lettuce. Lettuce of all kinds. So why do we have chasa, lettuce, and when do we eat it, and what does it represent? We primarily use this lettuce when we make a sandwich, the famous sandwich of Hillel called kurach, before the meal in which we take matzah, the moror, the haroset, but often used as the moror. In fact, this rain lettuce is supposed to be bitter, but it's different than the moror by Rabbi Rackless, which is the rabia kind of moror, makes your more. This is a different kind of moror. And in fact, in that same discussion in the Talmud, Rabbi says, this is better than the herbs. Why? And here's how he explains it. He says, more or romaine lettuce does not immediately grab you as bitter. It does it only as an aftertaste. Particularly the lettuce. Some of us have even eaten lettuce in Israel today, which is why on the Israeli-made 
Seder plates. When you eat lettuce, it begins slowly to get bitter in your mouth. And so Rabbi Oshaya says, this is even a better lettuce. I'm going to tell you why he thinks it's better. First, why we're eating it. When the Torah in the book of Numbers, Bamidbar says, you should take your barbecued, your roasted lamb, and you should put it between matzah and moror. The word used for moror is mirim, plural. Therefore, the rabbi has understood you need more than one kind of moror. And so, does Rabbi Hoshaya say this is a better, a better moror because of its intense nature? Namely, there's different kinds of bitterness. Some you look at and you immediately go, that's bad, that's evil. But there are others that you get seduced by slowly. The rabbis will say, how did the Israelites become slaves? One midrash is they got seduced. Originally, the Pharaoh gave them gold shovels. And so they felt empowered and important. And before they knew it, step by step, they were finding that they were chained to serve it. Sometimes that's how it works with evil in the world. It's not apparent up front. It kind of leads you through a stages of degradation of before you know it, you are chained. Before you know it, you are in a new reality. And so, Chazeret, I love it. Chazeret, the bitter herb, is one of the multiple bitter herbs invited during Passover to remind us as a seasoned people, yet that evil in the world. Sometimes things happen and goes awry. The rabbis point out in particular that it never says it's a perfect world. It only says it's a good world. And in a good world, you can have viruses because things sometimes metastasize. Sometimes things mutate. New bugs occur. That's part of a good world, but it's a flaw. But human evil also challenges exist. And we must, as an ancient people with eyes, ready to respond and to do our pet best. In this moment, we unite not passively, but strongly and fiercely to fight the virus, but more. In this moment, we are made aware that there is bitterness in the lives of men economically are suffering across the border. Physically, people are suffering. My son is our doctor in New York. He has made this real to me for weeks. There is great danger outside. And so, at our moror on Passover, we're reminded that for most of us, this is a moment of inconvenience. But for all of us, there is a call to be aware of different kinds of bitterness and to respond with responsibility, to respond with compassion, to respond with awareness and hope. The punchline of our Seder will be the opening of the door for Elijah. Because if God could take us out of Egypt, we have reason to be hopeful that all surus, the next places, we will emerge. The trouble will pass over. We will yet, next holiday, next Pesach, be together with family. May you take in all the kinds of bitter herbs and also all the sweetness of connecting with family with Zoom, hopefully being more effective than me in using it. To Sameach. So, Ruth, Cantor Ruti, um, we're going to listen to you singing. Um, well, we already did Dayenu, you're right. So I'm going to actually go next to Rabbi Siner. Thank you so much. Hold on. Let me go to the next on the flow. Um, here we go. And he is not here. All right. Um, we are going to have to um, get some support to get Rabbi Siner back on as a panelist. In the meantime, I am going to invite Rabbi Steinberg. Thank you. Just a moment.
Good afternoon, everybody. Hag Sameach. And my name is Rabbi Rick Steinberg. I'm the rabbi at Congregation Sheremalot in Irvine. Ma Nishtana. How is this Passover different from all other Passovers? My five minutes is not nearly enough time to explain. But I can tell you in the last 30 years, I have never celebrated Passover with my two brothers or their families. This year I am, albeit via Zoom. How is this Passover different from all others? In every way possible. For many, this Passover is worse because of illness or finances, and we keep them in our prayers for health and sustenance. And yet, in another way, this Passover has the potential to be transformative in ways we never imagined. Indeed, never in human history has our world been so unified for better or for worse again, but all because of one issue. Who would have thought that a pandemic would bring the entire world to a halt? But is that the only thing that binds us? Can this moment be more than just avoiding illness? Rather, can it be about spiritual health and community togetherness in ways we have never seen or imagined before? The last item on the Seder plate is known as charoset, the delicious blend of apples, wine, cinnamon, walnuts, and other kinds of fruits. There is some debate in the Talmud about whether eating charoset is a religious obligation or just a voluntary treat. All of the rituals in which we partake are means to a symbolic end. That is, what we do ought to inspire us, remind us, lift our spirits, and bring us deep meaning. While there is debate in the Talmud about what haroset symbolized, the common understanding is that it represents the mortar the Jewish slaves use for the Egyptians' buildings and construction projects. So much sweat and tears connecting one brick to another, one pyramid piece to another, one slab to another. And yet, at least for me, haroset is my favorite Passover food. It certainly beats gefilte fish and horseradish. It is sweet and tasty, it's crunchy and healthy. Haroset is where Passover is at. My question for us today is, man nishtana. What can haroset mean in a time of social distancing, in a time of extreme isolation, in a time of a lack of personal freedom, in a Passover that's so different than any other Passover? Just as haroset represents the mortar that brought two pieces of material together to, to connect them, even in a time of crisis and pain, so to Charos at this season can represent the holy connection of people linking in ways we never imagined possible. Consider your family and your friends outside of your home. Perhaps you have never spoken with them more than since you've been isolating at home. It's almost counterintuitive. Staying at home keeps us more in touch. What will happen when we are free from the shelter in place directive? The Israelites out of their bondage created a nation, but it took them 40 years. What will be for us? How will this Passover inspire us differently? Will the change be sustained? Consider each of our individual Jewish communities coming together in ways this past month that have forever transformed the way we will commune and bond in the future. More people have attended programs and services virtually than ever before in person. The haroset silver lining of COVID-19 is causing greater attachment between people than ever before. Consider our Orange County Jewish community, the Jewish Federation stepping up to lead on how to help the nonprofits and small businesses navigate this financial crisis, and now communally bringing us together to share wisdom spirituality and music so we can be as one connected community. That is haroset at its best, the mortar that binds us all. How can we further connect to each other? If the Israelite slaves could link brick to brick, even in a miserable situation, so too can we connect soul to soul to attach one person to another, one institution to another, and in so doing become one community. For now is the time now is the time to reach out beyond ourselves. Now is the time while we are trapped in our homes, 
not to be trapped in our beings, for we have untold connectivity potential in this county, beyond what we may have even thought possible. Rabbis and cantors across the denominations coming together in joy to see a haroset moment, a connected moment. Now is the time for Kihila Kedosha, holy community. Passover is the holiday of ultimate freedom. How ironic that we feel so trapped, and yet while we are stuck in our homes for the high purpose of health, we are not shackled in terms of the friendships we can sustain or the relationships we can nurture. We are filled with haroset to connect one person to another. Chag Sameach and happy Passover. Hi, everybody. My name is Rabbi Yisrael Siner. Uh, not Siner, but Siner, but it's okay. I think that's mispronounced. As long as it's not Sinner, I'll take it. No <laughs> problem at all. So I'm from Beth Jacob of Irvine. Uh, I've been asked to discuss, to discuss the Zeroa, which is the shank bone that goes onto the Seder plate that represents the Pesach sacrifice that was brought this evening. But it also represents the Zeroa Nituya, Zoranatuya means the outstretched arm. And of course, God has no physicality to him. So if we're discussing anything physical, it's anthropomorphism, it's taking in un a characteristic that doesn't apply and applying it in order to give us an understanding. So I understand that the arm represents strength. But what is the idea of the Zoranatuya, the outstretched arm? I like to suggest the idea is that that arm of God, the influence of God, that care of God, the love of God, that stretches out throughout all time, throughout all generations, into every situation, even into our present day coronavirus situation. The story is told of a peasant who lived out in some village out in the middle of the forest. He was impoverished. And the way that he would support his family was by chopping wood. And leading up to Passover, leading up to Pesach, he was chopping wood day and night, and he was absolutely exhausted. And it came time for the Seder, and he went to lie down a little bit beforehand, and he fell into a deep sleep, and his wife's there with the kid. She comes and says, please come. The children are waiting. I'll be there soon. Falls back asleep. She comes back, please come. The children are waiting. I'll be there soon. The poor guy keeps falling asleep. Finally, she comes in the fifth, sixth time. She says, if you don't come now, the children are going to fall asleep. You won't have a Seder at all. He says, bring them in. The kids come into his room. The poor guy is so exhausted. He barely opens his eyes. And he said, children, I want you to know, the same God that took us out of Egypt, that's the same God that we speak to when we say, Baruch Atah, we never make a blessing. That's the same God who's with us every day of our lives. He hasn't changed. Perhaps we have changed, but he hasn't changed at all. With that, he fell back asleep. Well, after Passover, he went to visit his Rebbe, and his Rebbe said, so how was your Seder? And he turns all embarrassed. I can't tell you. His Rebbe says to him, I'll tell you. Your Seder lit up the universe. It lit up the world. That was the most important message that could have been given and that must be given on Pesach. God hasn't changed. That Zroa Natuya, that outstretched arm, is there throughout all generations. And it goes into each and every home. My son is in Israel. I spoke to him this morning before Yom Tov began there in Israel. And in Israel, there's literally a lockdown on Pesach night because Pesach night is when everyone travels to go see their family. There's literally a lockdown that no one's allowed to leave their homes. And actually, the Torah tells us, on the night of Passover, the original Passover, the Aten Lotetsu Ish Petach Beito, no one is allowed to leave your houses. And that's exactly the situation. Someone walks out, they're told, hey, Mishmar Agvul, the Border Patrol police have to go back inside. No one's allowed to leave. So you have people having a Seder with a much smaller family than usual. People having a Seder with just a spouse. 
people are having a Seder by themselves. But even in that situation, God sends Elijah the prophet to them, to visit with them, to be with them, to share with them, and to let them know that I am with you, that Zroa Natuya, that outstretched arm is with you, no matter what situation you are in. So a tremendous thank you to those who put this together, Federation, a beautiful, beautiful idea and a beautiful job. And let us remember as we celebrate our Seder tonight, Seder means order. Order means that there is an order, a heavenly order for that which happens. We often don't understand it. We often don't, get, don't have the insight understanding of it. But there's an order, there's an order to what we're going through right now. It's rolling it to you, the arm is outstretched. Let us all reach up and embrace that arm and take the opportunities, the unique opportunities that this space up offers us and maximize them and grow as human beings, grow as family members, grow as Jews, and grow as part of this wonderful community that we are. Thank you and Chag Sameach to everybody. Thank you so much, Rabbi Siener. We're going to have one more song that will be shared with us by Cantor Amy Robinson Katz. Um, and before we do that, I just wanna say as Arlene Miller, as the CEO and president of Jewish Federation of Orange County, I really wanna thank everyone. Thank everyone for taking the time today to joining us, to joining the community. I think many of you may have been um, engaged in the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. We've had over 250 families join us so far today. And this is just the beginning because there's many people who reached out who wanted to, um, click on the link afterwards and um, listen and be inspired by our rabbis from across Orange County, from across the denominations. And in these challenging times, it truly is um, a joy that we can all come together as community in whichever way that we can to share and to be present with one another before we all welcome and embrace our Passover holiday. So I just wanna thank you all again and thank you for giving us the gift of leading um, the community as a Jewish federation. And so um, at this point, I'm going to pass it over um, to Cantor Amy Robinson Katz. So just a moment. There we go. Wait. Amy, we can't hear you. Hello. Now we can hear you one more time. <laughs> this year we are together on Zoom. Next year in Jerusalem. Lashana Haba, Lashana Haba, Lashana Haba, Birusha Live, Lashana Haba, Lashana Haba, Lashana Haba, Birusha Live. Shana Haba, the Rosha Lime Havenuya. The Shana Haba, the Rosha Lime Havenuya. The Shana Haba, the Rosha Lime Havenuya. The Shana Haba, the Rosha Lime Havenuya. Haksamea. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. everybody. Have a wonderful day. Chag Sameach, everyone. Chag Sameach. Happy Passover. 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 Happy Pass